top of the morning to you. All right, we're going to learn how to connect to a Access Database, an ACCDB, which is an Access Database 2007 or newer, from Java 8 or newer. Step one, download you can access. And um, this link will be available below, down there. Um, click on it, and then you can download it. This file, folder file will be zipped and extract it to its contents. If you can't extract it, and um, yeah. All right. Uh, so inside there, you'll see there's a couple of files. One is this uh, you can access 3.0.5 in my case. So you guys might have a newer version, .jar. And inside the lib file, you'll also have four different .jar files. So you'll need all of these um, files, so those ones, and you'd need to import them to your project. So you've downloaded it and extracted it. Now to import it, I'm using NetBeans uh, 8.1 currently. And to import to the project, you would right click on your project. So if you started a new project, in my case, I'm doing a book uh, example, and you would go properties. And inside that, you'd go to your libraries. So it is right click, properties, libraries. You then go add JR folder. You browse to where you have extracted, you can access and um, download. You would then add, you can access dash whichever version you've got. Um, add that, and then you'll also need to add all the different file files inside the lib. So your commons.lang, commons-logging, hsqldb, and jaxis. All right, um, so you've got five imports here, and after you've got five imports, click OK. Okay, so we've now imported this to our current project. My current project uh, has a library database inside it, and you see it's an ACCDB, and we want to connect to that. And inside there is a table called Books, and I just want to retrieve some information for this uh, video. All right. You'll notice that I've created a, in my project, I've got a GUI screen with just a basic uh, text file into the center of it. I've got a book manager, which should manage my books and have an array of stuff that's currently being dealt with. Um, so I'm not going to be doing more, more details of that. And we've got a storage manager class. We're going to be working predominantly with a storage manager class. I'm going to make it so that it can be reusable. Now, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need your uh, open, create your connection. I normally create that as a field inside there. Now, you'll notice that um, defaultly, it'll be underlined in that because it's not imported. So you need to make sure you import java.sql.connection. Um, some people prefer to just go java.sql dot connection and then you wouldn't have to worry about importing it directly you could just leave that out and step out um, quite frankly I'm using NetBeans so if NetBeans if you go control spacebar on anything you can automatically do the import okay now after you've imported the connection or created your connection you're going to create your constructor and inside our constructor for this class we are going to open up this connection so I'm going to as a parameter receive through the URL to the database. So this is my connection string to the database, in other words, where the database is located in comparison to this. And inside your uh, storage manager, um, your class to open up the connection, you'll need to do a couple of things. Now, excuse me for, uh, I'm just directly importing it here, but um, the first step is you're going to create your driver string. Now your driver string points to net dot you can access. Let me just uh, minimize this so we can see more of it. Hey, go away, go away. All right. Um, so you'll see um, the driver class is net dot you can access dot jdbc dot you can access driver. Now you'll notice there's a red underline under the important adding the the driver. And the reason why is because there's an unreported exception. I'm going to throw it here. If it's better practice to, have, well, I prefer handling it inside the user interface so that I can message the programmer and the user at the same time. It can be handled later on in this class is then much more reusable. Um, so I've thrown the exception that is happening, that the fact that this class is not found. Now my driver manager has not been imported, so control space bar there, and that will automatically import uh, java.sql.driver manager at the top from NetBeans. If you're using another version, just make sure you include, you could potentially just include java.sql.star, and then when you clean and build it, it should get rid of all the other imports that aren't used. All right, so now over here, we're going to open up the connection. Now we're going dot get connection, and here we're going to use the database URL, so URL to the database. 
Solo driver manager dot get connection JDBC full colon you can access full colon forward slash forward slash and you port the URL again opening up this connection is going to throw an exception so again I'm simply just going to throw that on make it somebody else's problem later on down the line alright so I'm going to pause here just for a couple of seconds but this is how you open up the connection alright well you guys can pause what the hell am I doing alright so the next step um, after you've opened up the connection, this connection string is, is working, then I'd suggest you come up with a couple of other methods to be able to allow you to execute queries. And then we can reuse this class as often as you want. Um, for my pupils, you're welcome to even just use my class. I've already got it there. Um, but yeah. Okay, so the first one is you've got a result set. Now your result set, um, so we import it. Is it will run a query, so this will be for your select statements or things like this. You could run that and then it would return uh, the resulting as a result set. So now, um, a statement.sql, it will create a statement from the connection, execute the query that you ask, and then return that result set. Um, in a later video, I'll go through how to manipulate or use that result set, but that's not for now. You'll have an update and an update return um, ID, all following the same sort of things. These are for your updates. This is when you've got an automatically generated unique identifier, so it will return your unique identifier. So I'll pause there for a second. So if you want to look while well, you can pause there for a second. So this is how you would return a um, the ID of the, the SQL statement there, or for the automatically generated number, sorry. All right, so you've got the this class here. So then inside your book manager class, I'm just going to go stman, and I'll then go and initialize my storage manager. Pause this video. So the path to the database, in my case, I've got it in the exact same. Um, I've got in the exact same uh, directory as the where the project is. So I don't actually have to do the full path. If I had to do a full path, I could just go um, wherever backslash. Whatever. But in my case, it's directly in the path. Um, remember, sometimes you need backslash, backslash if you want to backslash because otherwise it is a reserved character. It'll put the things there. So when you're drawing addresses, make sure you've got backslash, backslash. All right. Um, but in this case, it's inside this. So we're just going to do db library dot accdb, and that will be the connection we're opening. It'll have a red underline because there's an exception that has been handled. I'm just going to throw it on down the line. All right. Uh, again, it's still got a real line, that's really, there's two different types of SQL exceptions, or exceptions, and that'll be handled later. Okay, so this is going to be opening up the, the connection, the connection is created, but now I also actually want to create a method saying public string get box. And for our get box method, what we'll do, I'm not zoomed in, not a good idea. Alright, we're just going to then create a string. We will then go result set result is equal to uh, I'm not including this in the video because uh, the next video will include this. This is just a matter of checking that the connection works and making sure you know how to open up a connection with the access 2007 or newer database. Just remember at some point you'll need to catch those exceptions so at, at some point surround your tr uh, Surround your statements with a try catch so it will handle the different exceptions and make sure when you print out that you print out the ex the EX so you can get more detailed error message. Okay, let's run this thing. Play. Bam. Okay, so these two are the only books I had in my database. So it's connecting to the database, reading from the database. Goodbye.